this video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, tradition. Solder Weld, bringing innovative brazen products to the HVAC industry. What's going on guys? Happy Saturday. Hope you all are having a good weekend. Been a little while, been a couple weeks since I've been able to actually sit down here in the little studio, aka my garage, and shoot a little footage. Okay, we've done a couple live streams the last few weeks which have been really fun really good engagement and response but i don't want to do too many of those in a row um and lead people to believe that you know I'm, I'm done making videos it's not the case but out here where i'm at we really finished up summer with a bang we had a kind of a a second wind of wall-to-wall -wall service calls bid jobs installs change outs stuff like that i'm also going to class two nights a week now going to some code classes i'm going to be going and getting my plumbing license here soon and after that i should be going right into classes to get a boiler license so i've had a lot going on i'm really hoping though now that things are starting to cool down things will slow down a tiny bit and i'll get some chances to actually pull out the camera gear and take you guys along with me as I go through some calls. In any event, I wanted to get out here just to touch base with you guys, uh, get something out there and talk to you a little bit. Thought maybe I'd do a little rapid fire uh, answering session from some of the questions I get in the comments or in email messages that I haven't had time to go back and type. I figure, well, what the heck, I'll do it right here in a video, go through a couple of them and uh, give you some quick answers. I have a question, why do you edit your videos between clips that don't need editing? Well, hey, I'm making a video, bud. I want gummy bears. Where are they? Um, they're upstairs in the cabinet. You can each get one, one bag. Okay. What? Let her have a turn, Jack. That's why. If you're referring to the little breaks in between my sentences, it's because I've literally had to chop out either long ums, pauses for me to think, pauses for me to beat my kids, things like that. I prefer to not sit here, whether it be at this desk or in my van driving, talking to you guys. I want it, I want it to be snappy. I want it to be coherent, but I want it to be quick. It's easy to have the mind wander anyway just from having somebody sit and talk to you in one spot. So I try to at least make the ideas flow together as quickly as possible. So if you see little cuts and breaks sometimes in between sentences, pauses, or paragraphs, it's my way of cramming a lot of information into a small package uh, in consumable bite sizes for you guys on the internet. Wearing a hoodie with a hard hat makes you look like a hobo, LOL. Are you not entertained? Well, buddy, I, I think you're referring to the VRF Chronicles video where in the beginning I tried to make setting a dip switch look as epic as possible. And it is what it is. It was freezing that day. So yeah, I put my hood on. I had still had to have a hard hat on site. So don't really have a great answer for you beyond that right there. Except the are you not entertained part does come from one of my favorite movies. I believe you took that from Gladiator, which has to be almost a 20 year old movie now. People often stop me in the street and say I do look like a young Russell Crowe. Have you ever seen anyone jump right into doing HVAC as a controls technician with limited HVAC knowledge and experience, AKA programmable logic controllers, Niagara, Tritium, Backnick, et cetera, et cetera? Absolutely, man. I would say the majority of controls techs that I know personally come from a computer background versus an HVAC background. That's not always the best way to do it. In fact, sometimes that can be frustrating for us as the mechanics. But yes, 100%, you don't have to come directly from an HVAC HVAC background, although that combination would probably give you your best and well-rounded uh, controls technician. Because if you're talking about actual controls guys that write the programs for the customers that actually control the equipment versus somebody who's servicing the controls, you need to have an understanding of sequence operations. Otherwise, how can you control an intricate building automation system? How do you know when the chillers come on? How do you know how that ties in with the cooling tower? You need to understand that that chiller needs to see and recognize that there is flow going through the barrel before the compressor will start, which means those pumps have to come on well before the chiller comes on. 
you know, there, there's things that you have to be able to understand, which you could probably get, uh, you know, a lot of the controls guys, like I said, came from a computer background. So yeah, eventually they get around to understanding the basics of it. I think if you have somebody that has the aptitude for computers and programming, and they're already a mechanic, they'll be one hell of a controls tech. But yes, to answer your question, no, you do not need to come from an HVAC background to get an entry level position in a controls capacity. How physically demanding is HVAC? It's a very broad question and it's a little hard to answer that in absolute terms. Relative to what? If you're comparing it to say working a tobacco field, well then HVAC is probably like an office job. But for the most part, when we're talking about skilled trades and blue collar jobs, yes, they are physical in nature. As long as coils, cabinets, condensers, and air handlers, chillers and line sets, and, and everything like that are made from steel, copper, or cast iron, aluminum, and aren't installed by robots, then yes, there's always gonna be a physically demanding element to this trade. There's also a very large amount of tools and equipment you need to perform even minuscule tasks on HVAC equipment. So there's a lot of roping stuff up and down, there's a lot of carrying stuff to and fro, and there's a lot of exposure to extreme elements. So yes, it can be hard on your body, which is why we have to take precautions and make sure to wear PPE, use proper lifting, knee pads when available, etc. Keep in mind though, the physical aspect to this type of work is part of what is making it so shorthanded these days. The younger folks these days tend to be a little more reluctant towards getting into things that involve them getting off the couch. I'm quite used to working with my hands. Um, in fact, I've even developed social media thumb, which is an ailment plaguing my generation from excessive Instagram posting and you know, Amazon beard oil. This leaves a huge void and an opportunity for those that are willing to work, to go to work, learn a trade, and make a good living. And before I get guys in the comments saying that millennials are millennials get a bad rap, it's it's the baby boomers' fault that they you know coddled the millennials. Well, whatever, you may be right. And like I said, I'm a millennial, so there are, there are exceptions to the rule always. But I'm saying in large, the youth today and the younger generations are not sprinting towards skilled labor. Uh, well, it says here that you've been out of high school for about three years. Um, what have you been up to since then? I've been a part-time barista for the last few years while trying to find myself, so. Okay, that's a whole other debate and topic of why that exactly is. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm getting into the reality though that because of that fact, it's giving a big opportunity to those who are willing to. I forgot there's one more here. I wa This is an email. I watched your video on getting your first HVAC job and have a couple questions. I'm active duty army at the moment and will be getting out in two years. I'm coming from a combat MOS like you did. So all I'm asking is do I just need to get the two years of schooling and apply for jobs or is there a more or is there more to it? I plan on getting out after my contract ends and want to set myself up for success because I have a family to take care of. Do you have any advice and information for me? Of course, man. Like you said, there was a time here that I was in the same shoes as you. Believe it or not, back then I had a beautiful head of hair. Okay, if it's not clear by now, I found a new app the other night. Let me have my fun, let me get this out of my system, and uh, you know, just, just let me feel special, okay? Let me feel like I'm in a movie. The one thing that's different about your email than some of the other ones I get from veterans is the fact that you still have two more years in your contract. So what I would say to that is if you're stateside, without even touching your GI Bill, you can get tuition assistance when you're active duty. The military will reimburse you or maybe even cover up front tuition costs while you're active duty. So in many ways, you're getting even more education out of that. I always tell guys anyway, when they first get out of the military to use the GI Bill, go to classes at night and get their first job during the day, do it together to get the most out of that time. You can do the same thing while you're in the military, on base, go to classes at night, and then you'll be out in two years with the ability to say you were a veteran, you've been to school, and then you still have a whole untapped GI Bill you can still choose to use. You can use that towards a union apprenticeship, you can use it towards a non-union apprenticeship, 
and get BAH, which is your housing allowance, as an E5 with dependents for a couple years. That's one thing you could do with it. You could also just go back to college again if you wanted to go a little bit higher up now. You want to get an engineering degree. You wanted to get into construction management. That's the easiest advice I could ever give is, is that right there. You're in a perfect position in knowing what you want to do now this early on. So best of luck to you and thank you for your service. Thanks for those questions, guys, and I'll try to do these videos from time to time to help uh, catch some of the questions that fall through the cracks. There's a lot of comments, a lot of emails, a lot of direct messages on Instagram that I don't end up getting to because of the pure volume. Simply due to the volume of those messages combined with the hecticness of my schedule these days. Just know if it's been more than a couple weeks since I've gotten back to you, don't hesitate to just resend the message because there's a good chance at this point it's been buried down below and probably won't be gotten to. I'm gonna go ahead to the park with the kiddos for a little while today on this beautiful Saturday. And then I have a little bit of business later on with Mr. Zach Ciota from over at HVAC Shop Talk. So guys in my audience that maybe don't know who that is, Get on over there, I'll link to him at the end of this video. He has great live streams, uh, several a week, giveaways of HVAC products, and a fantastic podcast. So guys, go check him out. I will see you guys soon, maybe in a live stream, maybe in a bag review here in the next day or two. And thanks for watching, stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next one.